So in this next chapter, we're going to talk about frequency and probability distributions. Remember, when I say the word distribution, we're really looking at the spread of the data, so where the data falls. Here's what I'm going to cover today. So there are two different types of distributions, a frequency distribution and a relative frequency distribution. So a table that includes every and I repeat, every possible value of a statistical variable with its number of occurrences is called a frequency. And we've made a frequency distribution before. But a little refresher um, that instead of recording the number of occurrences in the proportion, sorry, instead of recording the number of occurrences, I could record the proportion of occurrences. And that would be called a relative frequency distribution because it's relative to all the other frequencies. So why don't I go ahead and calculate one of those for us? That way we're all on the same page. So here I have um, to calculate the relative frequency. So I already have a frequency table. I have the age of students in my math class. So there were four, that's what frequency is, right? Four 18-year-olds, seven 19-year-olds, nine 20-year-olds, three 21-year-olds, and two 22-year-olds for a total of 25 students in my class. In order to calculate the relative frequency, also called the proportion, or you could even convert that to percentage, what we do is we take the frequency in the category over our total frequency. So if I wanted to calculate the relative frequency of 18 year olds occurring in my math class, I would take four, so the frequency of getting an 18 year old out of my total, and that would give me 0.16. And I do that for every single category in order to calculate the relative frequency. So I could take seven divided by 25, that would give me 0.28. I could take 9 divided by 25, that would give me 0.36. 3 divided by 25 is going to be 0.12. 2 divided by 25 is going to be 0 0.08. Now, it's important to note that the sum of your relative frequencies is going to equal 1, right? Remember, probability either goes between 0 and 100. There's no chance of it occurring or 100% chance of it occurring. So this should add up to one because then you've accounted for everybody in your math class. No one's left behind. You've got all 25 students accounted for. So why don't we go ahead and construct a relative frequency bar graph, okay? Um, we can construct the histogram. Instead of putting frequencies on our y-axis, we're going to put the relative frequency. So here we're going to go ahead, we're going to give this a title, Ages of Students in Math Class. Okay, I'm going to have my 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 20, 21, and 22-year-olds. This is our ages, that's numerical data. Over here, I'm gonna have my relative frequency, which is gonna go all the way up to one. So maybe I'll have like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, actually that was a mistake. And the reason that was a mistake is my highest relative frequency is only 36. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those, and let's change that, okay? Maybe we should count by 0 0.05. That sounds better. So I have 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.4, okay? That's a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and change my graph color. So I had four 18 year olds that gave me a portion of 0.16 that's going to be right about here. For 19 year olds, I had almost 30. So we're going to go right about there. Sorry, 0 0.30. For 20 year olds, I had 0.36. So that's right above here. For 21 year olds, I had 0.12. So right about here. And for 22, I had 0.08. So I'd say that's right about here. 
So this is a graph of our relative frequency. Here it is. Um, one thing I want to talk about, especially in this case, is that each of the columns has a width of one, right? So that means that the area of each column is the relative frequency of the column, right? One times 0.16 is gonna be the area. This column has an area of 0.16. This column here has an area of 0 0.28, 0 0.36, 0 0.12, point zero eight right that's gonna be the case so the sum of all the relative frequencies in our graph is one so the area of our graph equals one one other thing I really wanted to note is that relative frequency graphs and frequency distributions have the same shape because they contain the same data so here we have our relative frequency graph, and here we have just our frequency graph. As opposed to graphing the relative frequency, I graphed the frequency. There was 0.16 proportion, you can't see that green. There was 0.16 proportion of 18 year olds, but there were four 18 year olds in my course. And they have the same shape, which is super important. That should be a really key takeaway.